you guys today great to have you on the worst team training weekly show i hope that you guys are doing well and that you are having a fantastic tuesday what's going on everybody if you would go ahead and come on in we have great friends joining us right now jason wallace what is up on periscope and also great friends who else is joining us a lot of people hey hey what's going on gov joy what's going on blessed mt welcome everybody back to the worst team training weekly show here at WorstTeenTraining.com and also Worst Teen Training University. All you guys also connecting with us by Facebook Live. Thanks so much for that. And NZ Cuts, what's up? Great to see you. I know you got to DM me soon, Jason. What's going on? All of our great friends on uh, iTunes as well. Hey, Jen Janelle, how are you? It's been a long time. Good to see you too. A lot of great people coming up. Thanks so much. Uh, wow, like 177 people coming in. That's awesome on Periscope. Thanks for that. Uh, all you friends on audio. Uh, by iTunes and Spreaker. What is up? Man, it feels like a lifetime since we've connected, but I think it's only been a week. Rick Costa, what's going on, Rick? I saw your broadcast just about a few minutes ago, and I thought, ooh, man, we're going head to head. But I'm glad to have you here. And we got Jeff Crandall here, everybody. Jeff Crandall. Uh, we're going to get to Jeff in just a second, and we're going to be interviewing him and talking about creativity. Uh, really, what this scope is about and this broadcast is about, of course, is cookie cutter worship. So yes, what's worshiping spirit and truth? I want to get to that in a second, GOV, because you were following our um, shout-outs on uh, Bible.com, version, and also Faith Life. So thanks so much for that. Michelle Stokely, what's up? Michelle was with us last week. Michelle Stokely, a worship leader out there. How are you, Michelle? So lovely. And then also our other lovely uh, watcher here and fan and member at Worship Teen Training University, Keila. Keila is going to be coming on the program pretty soon. But whoa. I got so excited, I almost hit the monitor. I actually did hit the monitor. I'm so excited to tell you guys. Awesome, awesome, big, 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 did I say big? Huge news coming in just a minute. So you gotta, you gotta hang it, you gotta hang just for a second with me because this is gonna blow your socks off, trust me. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Snapchat, you wanna make sure that you're following us. I wanna make all these brief today so that way we can get right to the stuff. Snapchat, if you want to get more exclusive content of what we do here at WorstingTraining.com and also Worsting Training University, you can follow us on Snapchat. We put out snaps daily uh, talking everything about your training and what you're doing with your worst team, encouragement. A lot of you guys are following us on that, so thank you so much for the follow and also your messages because over the past week we've been talking about how to encourage your the leading of worship and what God is doing through you, uh, primarily how that's affecting your team. And a lot of you guys have been sharing stories with us. I had one uh, broken heart that shared a story with us yesterday uh, that was talking about how people are just fighting in their church. And so I um, want to address that. Prayers go out to you. You know who you are because you're watching. Uh, so we want to you know, address some things to the front in terms of it's not just about the music that we create people, but it's also about the relationships that we hold. Speaking of, in the news, as you guys have been watching, a terrible, terrible terrorist act that happened uh, last night, Manchester, Manchester, uh, London, and all of our prayers go out to you and the UK who have been um, affected by this. Uh, our prayers are with you, and we ask God uh, for a quick, speedy healing and also for comfort because there's a lot of uh, uh, guys and families that have been affected by this. So letting you know that our hearts and prayers are with you. The churches over there in the UK as well that are serving a great need right now to help comfort all these people. Our prayers are with you and our thanks um, are to you. So UK, we stand with you and we are not afraid. Hashtag. We love you guys. Uh, so let's get going. We have this too coming up. Uh, our deadline of the Worship Team Training Songwriting Contest is approaching. So you got songs. Look, we got some entries already, but you got songs. Hey, get those songs off the shelf and get them into the church's health. I don't know. I'm just rhyming. That's a bad song. But look, uh, all that to say is that you will win as a grand prize winner a Shure condenser microphone. Also, your chance to have your song listened to by professionals in the industry of both Christian and worship recording. So you'll be able to do that. At the same time, uh, runner second, third, and fourth runner-ups will receive prizes from Kaiser Capos, Worship Musician Magazine, and also guidetracks.co. So look, if you guys got songs, Rick Costa, I'm looking at you. 
if you guys got songs, y'all need to enter. And all you got to do, if you become a member at Worcester State Training University, it's free. Uh, for you guys that are, if you're not a member, then all you need to do is follow the instructions that are on our site, wttu.co slash contest. So you guys listen to us by audio. Um, iTunes, make sure that you jump on that too. Also, last up, we got this before I announce the special, special, special announcement news. Catherine, come on, get your songs out there if your husband's got them. Special news, um, before I get to that, tomorrow is our webinar, March, <laughs> March, <laughs> May the 24th with Dwayne Moore. Dwayne was with us about four weeks ago on the show, and he is going to be doing an awesome webinar about taking your worship ministry to the next level and primarily taking your worship ministry beyond the four walls and into mission. So I can't wait for that. It's going to be 2 p.m. tomorrow, Central Standard Time. You please have to do that. And yes, the website, if you're following us by Twitter, um, those of you folks that are asking us right now on Periscope and also by iTunes, all you need to do is go back to our Twitter feed. That's at WorshipTT, and you will find the links to the contest the link to tomorrow's special webinar. And big, big news also. This coming Thursday, we got Brothers McClurg coming up. That is going to be fun. We're talking more about creativity. You don't want to miss Brothers McClurg this coming Thursday at 11 a.m. Central. Follow the link. Uh, going back to Worst Teen Training University uh, because if you want to get all of the programs and all of what we're doing, I'm going to put the link up right now. And you can find out all the events. I'm going to just say real quick, uh, check the events, and you'll have to get that. And so here is our special news you guys have been waiting for, and uh, we're going to we're going to roll on with today's topic about cookie cutter worship. Does it bother you that when you step into somebody else's church, it almost sounds like the last church that you stepped into, or maybe a conference that you went to, and the church that you're at, maybe they're trying to do the same thing. Does it bother you that things seem cookie cutter? Does it bother you maybe that the Bible says one way, but yet we see churches and things and people go another way? Well, uh, I am happy to introduce to you our special, special guest here and uh, worship leader and dear friend, Jeff Crandall, who is a worship leader out in the Tucson area of Arizona. Jeff and I have known each other for about probably 15 plus years or so. And done a lot of work together in our mentoring group, mentoring gathering group on, on the West Coast, as well as he is with Worship Catalyst by our good friend Ryan Austin. Uh, I'm sorry, Austin Ryan. And uh, we're doing a great work out there serving the new plant churches and what they're doing. So everybody, please welcome to the program Jeff Crandall. Jeff, how are you today? I'm good, Brandon. Thanks for having me this morning. It's great to have you, man. Thanks for being here. Yeah. It's good. It had, it had felt like I just had church announcements just a moment. Yeah, ago. well, awesome. I mean, here's your you bulletin. Got a lot going on. Your bulletin and your program and your communion cup, and there you go. Yeah, got a lot going on. It's exciting yeah. stuff. Thanks. We well, not as much as going on with you, my friend, because you have been up to your ears by doing things for uh, raising uh, awareness and help for what you're doing. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing and what you're aiming for out in California? Uh, yeah. Well, I'm I'm actually doing work really kind of all over the country right now, which is pretty cool through Worship Catalyst, mentoring um, young worship leaders who are good, you, worship leaders for new churches, church plants in particular, um, mentoring the guys and, and gals and helping them uh, learn the values of leading worship, um, uh, learning how to put a team together, how to run a rehearsal mm -hmm. and doing all that. And the ministry is just really growing here in Tucson where I'll be targeting as I raise some more support in the future. Yeah, because it, it is kind of a missionary work in a sense. True. So, excited about that, and of course, I'm leading worship at a church plant called Presidio Church here in Tucson, which is a new church that meets downtown in a little theater. And so, awesome. excited about that too. Awesome. Yeah, good stuff. So, um, is it a concern for you, Jeff? I, I just opened up the can of worms that people may be muddling through about, you know, cookie cutter worship. When you hear that term, what goes off in your mind? Yeah, well, I, I experienced just what you explained a little bit ago about going to different churches. Uh, I left the church that I was with about a year ago and started to just kind of go into churches. It seemed like it was the same church over and over and over again. Um, uh, worship leaders were all about, looked about the same. The music all sounded about the same and um, different front of the stage, but that was it. But as far as the service and the music choices, it was all pretty much like turning on uh, 
the your Spotify account and hearing the original music, you know, or or buying it on iTunes. I buy all my stuff still. Um, uh, I'm a little old fashioned about buying stuff, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, so it, we talk. It seems like we talk a lot about creativity in the church in worship circles, but I don't see a lot of it. Hmm. Um, and so I, that's why I love this topic because you you can. Be creative with the songs, with the music, with the way you put things together, and put your own flair into it, which is what I love. Hmm. So why do, you, why do you think that is in terms of the lack of creativity, but yet we talk about it in our circles, like you say, but we're actually not doing it? What gives? Oh, boy, you're, going, you're trying to get me in trouble. <laughs> uh, uh, personally, I think it's easier. It's easier mm -hmm. just to give people a, a recording and say, play it like that. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're going to be creative and kind of color, you know, you got the song and the song is going to basically be the song because it's written, you know. Um, but if you're going to go ahead and color it with different colors, it takes time. You have to develop the players to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to build into people. You have to build into the rehearsals. You have to take time. And I think it's um, more time than, than a lot of people are willing to put in. Hmm. Well, when you think about, I guess, regular worship teams, worship leaders I know get frustrated because their team, either they don't know their music or they're not prepared for rehearsal. So if that's the whole case, then how can they be even more prepared to do uh, copycat stuff? You know, And I guess in a, in a way that's on one side, but then on the other hand for worship leaders, they are pressed for time, and they probably don't have the luxury of building into a team into their team. So, what do you say to that? Well, there's definitely a tension uh, to that. Um, I think when you when you have to just copy what's on the CD, I think you have you raise the level of musicianship you have to have uh, in your church, which excludes a lot of developing musicians. And I think it hurts you more in three years than it does immediately because you can get people to fill that spot. But when those people leave the church, they move, they move on, or they quit, or they do whatever. Um, you don't have anybody to replace them because you've not built into anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, and I and I understand there's there's two different things. There's people who do it part time, who have a full time job outside of worship leading, who have different tensions than people who do it for a full time job. Um, mm -hmm. People who do vocational ministry full time really should have the time to develop other musicians. Mm -hmm. um, but I think sometimes a lot of these guys are musicians that become pastors, not pastors who are also musicians. And there's a little bit different mindset. Um, I've always been a pastor who is a musician. And so I, I put a lot in developing people, um, musically and also just in life. But if you're more of inclined to be a musician, you're kind of focusing more on the music end of it and on the raising the bar just musically and maybe a little bit less on the people. Mm -hmm. That's totally stereotyping, and I know there's people that don't fit either category. But yeah, um, you know, in my years, that's kind of what I've seen. Hmm. Well, I, we're getting uh, tweets right now in from Periscope because Catherine's telling us that you know she and her husband feel like they're out of place at their church, um, trying to be a pastor but not ordained. Uh, they're going through some really bad stuff there. Um, mm -hmm. I feel that. Um, it's it's kind of like the, I guess sometimes I know it because I've been in that environment. If you don't look and fit the mold within that church in terms of what the leadership and how they see you, then you're out. In terms yeah. of if you're not like a certain age or you don't dress a certain way, um, you know how how do we get to this place, Jeff? Um, you know, I think the church is kind of in some ways trying to chase the culture and trying to appear young and hip. And um, I think we, when we do that too much, we lose our individuality. I think we also lose our authenticity. Mm -hmm. um, I think when we copy, when we just copy other people's music and we just try to look like the last guy that was up here or um, try to fit the part, I think we become like, phony. In a right. sense, and um, when we can take a take a song and we can make it our own, and um, you know, I'm not talking about a complete rewrite of the song because nobody really has time, and most of us don't even have the ability to do that. But um, the ability to make it your own and feel your own, put it in your own key, put it in um, 
you know, arrange it so it fits you, not only you as a leader, but also your band better and brings out their uh, best features, you know, as a, as a team. Mm -hmm. um, it helps us to be more authentic. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the, the challenge is how do we do that as musicians, as, as worship pastors, and still help our senior leaders understand where we're going? Because sometimes it's a senior leader that has something in their mind that they want, and what they want is what they liked at the conference they attended. Wow, um, we're getting a lot of retweets right now, and a lot of a lot of people are amening. Thank you guys so much on Periscope for doing that. You guys on Facebook Live as well. Um, yeah, this is kind of a weird culture that we've created ourselves as a church, and I don't see, yeah. you know, one side of us, the church, is saying that we need to be evangelistic. Uh, but yet, how are we ministering not just to – I think we do a great job in terms of ministering to people who don't go to church. I think that there's a long way that we actually need to go. Uh, we're doing better mm -hmm. than what we have. But what I don't see a lot – and maybe I'm wrong here, Jeff – but I, what I don't see a lot is the ministering to your own, the ministering to your own church. And there, there was that fear of reaching in, right, 20 years ago. We want to reach out to people. We don't want to reach in. But yet I feel like that's done a disservice for us. Um, as well as for our worship teams. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think and I think you're right, you know, and I think that's where the concert, church concert kind of atmosphere has come. Mm -hmm. You know, I think some of our, um, there's, this, there's this tension between the youth culture and the, the uh, more senior adults, you know, and how do you keep the church together as one. Um, and you gotta let, be able to love both age groups. You know, I think we, we in, in trying to be young, we go too loud, too high, um, too flashy, where, you know, there's a middle ground where, yeah. um, where I think, personally, I think that's where authenticity lives. I think, I think millennials, people of, uh, really of all ages, they're, they're not looking for slickness, they're looking for people who are authentic. Absolutely. And I think you can have a good, presentation, including moving lights, including a fog machine, including all the trappings of a concert that we like and we've got our culture has gotten used to without going, you know, full out and trying to do, you know, whatever you two did last night, you right. know, um, right. I mean, there's a there's a middle ground where we can do a good professional quality presentation without throwing out um, different age groups for whatever reason uh, along the way. Yeah, we're getting some people that saying that older saints are sometimes hard to please from their observation. Uh, we had the same issues about putting lights over music, which is louder. Um, I think that we do so much pleasing uh, in the church that really I don't think we need to do that anymore. I think that um, we've had some, yeah, we're all stuck in their ways. That's what Purple Queen's saying on, on Periscope. Look, that's true. Um, Rick Cost, I'd like to hear what you would like to, uh, how you want to respond to that because Rick is an avid friend here. Um, we're just going to move on. Uh, my one thing that I can't wrap my head around is just this idea, like what you're saying, we have to cater to the younger generation. And reality is, is that they're already there. I, I yeah. think that, yeah, whitewash worship. Wow, Jason said that. Periscope, hashtag that, whitewash worship. Um, the, the thing is, is you know, there, there's so many millennials that actually or that follow worship team training. I think we have more millennials than any other age group that follow worship team training, and you guys come to us, and thanks for that. Um, but I think that you know when we lead worship, I don't think people care. Um, I spoke with guys in their 70s from guys in their 20s, and they told me that they really don't care about the style of music or what we do. All they, like, okay, Rick says this, people can tell when you're trying too hard, just be real. Amen, brother. Yeah. I, I think Amen. that there's so many people that we feel like we got to appeal to an age group, and, and I think that maybe 10, 20 years ago, the dem that demographic was important, but I don't think yeah. we have to narrow down our churches to say, well, we're only going to target 20s, only going to target 30s, because what does that say to the others who have needs? And at the same time, uh, when you look at the overall uh, financial situation that we're in, I don't think the church can afford to actually target just one single demographic, right? Ooh, I know that, yeah. kind, of, that kind of hurt probably. Uh, well, I, I think you're right, and I, I, this is this is one thing that I have not been able to answer mm. and figure out, you know, on my own. And I certainly would love some wisdom, but at some point we've got to understand that as we as we grow older, church is not going to be everything that we want, mm. um, because it does have to lean young. 
because people are more likely to come to Christ when they're young sure. than when they're old. Right. And so if you do, if you do target, you know, I'm 56, so I'm one of the older worship leaders that's still hanging on here. Um, when, if you target me, you know, I'm, I actually used to be a punk rock drummer, so I'm probably not a good true. target. I love, I love all kinds of things. So. All true. All, yeah. So I love all kinds of things. But if you target people who are me and older than me, um, then you're going to lose the younger generation. Yeah. So the older generations need to understand, okay, I need to hold on to church a little lighter and I'm not going to get everything, all my preferences, but I can certainly celebrate with, with Jesus that all these kids are coming to him, you know? And yeah. so at some point we need to figure that out. And there's a generation that hasn't really, you know, done that really well because they're fighting pretty hard. Mm. Um, and I also get that fight. You know, there are some practical issues with hearing loss. A lot of volumes really do hurt. Um, <laughs> it, it's just a practical yeah. thing for some yeah. people. And I think, you know, everybody else needs to understand that. And that's why there's got to be a middle ground. You're not going to ever be able to please everybody and you shouldn't try to please everybody. But there ought to be a way to, to reach most. Yeah, I, and, and just to say that, uh, to kind of tag off what you're saying, Rick Costa, brother, said this too, that, you know, did Jesus just preach to one particular age group? I uh, love that. I mean, yeah. he, he preached to one particular um, sect, culture. He was trying to get through the heads of the Jews, but yet at the same time, um, didn't go there to minister to them. He went to seek the lost. And the lost yeah. has no age group. The lost has no demographic. The lost has no racial ethnicity of catering from one side to the other. Um, right. You know, we see what's happened in London we, overnight, you know, and we see hatred that happens in our churches. And do we really want to compound that by making things harder in our church to worship when there's bigger, much larger battles going on in the world, and yet we're worried about age, we're worried about they didn't pick my hymn, or they sat in my yeah. pew, or they took my parking spot, when there's a world out there who needs the love of Jesus. That's right. That's right. And uh, we get lost. We get so focused on technology or so focused on whatever the new hip thing is that we forget about that. You know, Brennan, the other thing that I, I think about a lot when it comes to this is what do small churches do? Because smaller churches, I'm dealing with church plants for the most part. Um, how do they, they, can they possibly keep up with the mega church down the corner when it comes to production? They can't. No. They can't. No At Worship Catalyst, we say the excellence is really doing the best you can with what you have. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we try to educate and push people to do, is look at what you have, do the best you can with that. And people will respond to that because they know you're being real, you're being who you are, and you're being authentic within within um, your worship style, your music, your presentation. And you can do a great job, mm. um, but if we if we constantly just worship at, at the wow. feet of production, then we're gonna miss, the small churches are gonna miss out, or feel yeah. like they miss out. Yeah, golly, our, our screens are lighting up. Everybody's commenting. Uh, thank you guys on Periscope. You're aiming, yeah. you're just, it's going everywhere, nuts. Uh, Facebook Live too. Let me just jump to Facebook Live also real quick. Uh, Pamela Goodwin, thank you so much. She says, moving lights, smoke machines have no place in the church. Hey, uh, you know, to each his own on that one, I think that we can get distracted by too many things. Uh, you know, I think at, at some point uh, you have to find out really is it edifying your church and is that really who your church is about. Uh, Cindy uh, Pools Benbo on Facebook Live says, struggling, uh, I'm sorry, struggles in blended church worship music. How do we help everyone keep the focus on Christ and not our own personal preference in order to reach younger families? I love it. Traditional versus, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's, and Keila, thanks so much. She said, I'm loving that. Um, yeah. I mean, th there's so much. I think we hit a, a nerve with you guys. We struck a nerve. Yeah. Well, you had good it. questions today there, Brad. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're, hey, you're bringing it. So that's, this is yeah. great. And, uh, yeah. You, and that's the tension. And, and I think, Brent, I think it ha a lot of that vision has to come from the senior leader. Yeah, because if the worship leaders is driving that, um, whether it's more hymns, fewer hymns, uh, no hymns, Absolutely. loud, quiet, whatever, if the um, if the if the worship leader is driving it and does not have the full support of the senior leadership, then all you're going to do is lose your job and cause a <laughs> lot of fights in the process. If the senior leader supports it and drives it and explains it and helps love that older generation through it 
then I think you can make those transitions. But without yeah. the senior leader, um, you're just in for a battle. Yeah. Not that I know anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing because all you other staff guys out there are probably laughing too because you know what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, it's, I think um, uh, Jamie Harville and I, we want to write a new book called How to Get Fired. Oh, yeah, can I, I can write a couple chapters. Uh, hey, we'll have, a, we'll have you do the forward, you know. Um, you but yeah, that's that's uh, it's such a it's such a delicate like uh, Jason saying, and his small church is a delicate balance. Um, I had a, you know, I love her. I've I've known this lady now for the past maybe fifteen years since I've been at this church. Sweethearted woman, and she loves the hymns. And every day, every Sunday, she it feels like every day, but every Sunday she asks me, Brandon, are we gonna you know the the hymn we're going to sing that one hymn again, and I and I say yes, Evelyn, we're going to do that. And 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 little and, and little did I know this past Sunday she came to me. She said, "Oh hey, um, Brandon, I got a list. I I made a list of hymns that I want that I like to be sung in the yeah. church. And you know, and you have to look at that in two ways. Number one, you got to look at that as well. Is she causing a problem because she's giving me a list, or is she really telling me about her heart? Because maybe these are songs that are really on her spirit. Yeah. And so that's yeah. the way I actually took it. I actually, I know it bugs you guys. I know that. I get it. Trust me. I get my fair share too. But uh, this lady, she just said to me, you know, Brandon, but these are the prayers that I pray every day. And I just thought, wow, because that's a lot like what worship is. It's sung prayer. We're singing our prayers yeah. to God. But if we're not singing the prayers of the church, then we're just singing a solo. Yeah. Yeah, and there are some great hymn arrangements out there that we can do. There's no reason to, to not do them. I've been subbing rarely at a church that is making that transition from being an older church to trying to grow younger. And um, they used to separate, like, here are the hymns with the choir, and here's wow. the rest of the, of the service. And so I was encouraging them to mix it, have the band play the whole time, and find some good hymn arrangements. And there's even some good websites where you can become a member and get, um, yeah, I used to be a member of like hymn charts, I think it is, and I get, I get new arrangements every month, and so I could do some that I would have never thought to do, yeah. if I was just trying to find an arrangement. But since I was being fed regular arrangements of, of, uh, of hymns, I was able to to pick mm -hmm. good ones. And so there's really no excuse to throw to just say I'm not doing any hymns, because uh, there are some great arrangements now. Yeah, there are. That's, that's yeah. great, man. Uh, thank you guys so much for commenting. This is what it's about. Look, if you've got more comments and ideas that you want to share with us here at WorshipTeamTraining.com, then please, all you need to do is type in the comment window. Big thanks, shout out to Cindy and um, Keila, Pamela on our Facebook Live, and also um, all of our friends, Rick Costa, uh, uh, J Jason Wallace here on Periscope, and many others. Uh, look, the big, big news, i got to tell you. Um, first, you want to find Jeff here. You can find Jeff Crandall here on our exclusive Facebook page was Worship Team Training. So that is something that Jeff actually, this dude right here monitors and does a great job. So if you want to join that group, all you need to do is just click on that link that I just sent out right now on Twitter and also here on Facebook Live. Uh, get that, Jeff will approve you and we can continue the conversation and many others. But a great, great, great conversation that's gonna happen, there's two of them. Wait for this big news, I know you've been waiting because I didn't say it from the very, very beginning, but I wanna say it now. Thing number one, you have uh, Brothers McClurg is coming up this Thursday at 11. So you want to click on the link and become a member at Worship Team Training University. That's the only way that you can see it. And I've already put out the links that you can get to wttu.co. So you want to click on that link to become a member today to get Brothers McClurg and also Paul Balash. I'm going to put up, oh, did I just say that? Oh, I said it. There it is. Next Thursday, Paul Balash is coming to Worship Team Training University, and we could not be any more excited. Uh, I can't think of any way that we can be more excited, but um, big shout out to Paul Balash, uh, who's coming next Thursday. So if you want to watch that show, this is going to be calling, uh, we're calling the show Lead by Faith. So ooh, that's a good title, Lead by Faith. Uh, so we're going to be discussing that, hear from Paul, uh, sit at his feet and listen. Uh, what does it cost to become a member? Basically, it's like a latte a month. That's how you can get in. So all you need to do is go to the link. If you want to get more of Paul um, Balash and uh, Brothers, I'm typing this up for you right now, McClurg, okay? 
Uh, you can put this up there and uh, basically if you go to WTTU.co, I just gave you guys the link just now on Facebook Live and also on Twitter, so be sure to do that. Uh, but they're coming up, so you have to do this next th this coming Thursday and next Thursday. Love to have you. And we're going to have this man back, Jeff Crandall. Jeff, thanks so much for coming back and sharing your heart and your ministry. Hey, thanks for having me. It was fun. Love yeah. doing this with you. All the time, man. All the time. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. guys, we can't wait to see you back this coming Thursday at 11 a.m. Central for our next Thursday training with Brothers McClurg. And next week, Paul Balash. Also, be sure to get your songs in if you have not already. The links are already up there on Facebook Live and also Twitter. Uh, thanks so much, guys, for joining us here on Facebook Live. Periscope, iTunes, Spreaker, yada yada, and we love you guys so much. We'll see you back at worshipteentraining.com and also Worship Team Training University. See you soon. Bye. Love you.